So the data science field has been getting a lot of hype, especially these past couple years. From being called the sexiest job of the 21st century to rumors of the industry dying in the next few years. From thousands and thousands of data jobs being posted every single day to massive layoffs in the tech industry. I believe it's fair to say that although it might be the sexiest job of the 21st century, it's still a very vulnerable field. That being said, after watching hours and hours of videos, reading dozens of different career reports, and also speaking to various different industry leaders, I managed to come up with an evidence-based roadmap on how to become a full stack data scientist. First off, let's break down what a full stack data scientist even is. A full stack data scientist is very similar to a full stack software engineer in the sense that they are able to carry out a project from beginning to end all by themselves. They usually have a lot of experience in the field of data, starting all the way from data architecture and data engineering, all the way up to machine learning. Obviously, they might not specialize in those specific career paths, but they definitely do have enough knowledge and experience to understand what's going on and troubleshoot any problems that might come along. The most important part is understanding the context or domain knowledge of the entire field. For example, if you're familiar with architectural modeling or data engineering, you will have that extra knowledge to keep in mind when building your machine learning pipeline. You'll be able to put yourself in their shoes, understand some of their pain points, and overall build a better pipeline. All right, now that we understand what a full stack data scientist is, let's go into the steps you can take to become one. The first step is getting to know the basics. I'm assuming if you're interested in becoming a full stack data scientist, you have at least somewhat foundational knowledge within the field of data. Maybe you know a programming language or use Google Sheets and Excel, or maybe you even do a lot of projects with Power BI and Tableau. You're gonna to wanna to take this a step further and familiarize yourself with a variety of these tools, languages, and services. However, you have to make sure you have the basics down first. You wanna be comfortable enough in the sense that you have at least one or two projects down with a specific language, service, or tool. Let's say your dominant language is Python and you've done a couple projects with Python, NumPy, Seaborn, or Scikit-Learn. If your goal is to become a full stack data scientist, I recommend you try and apply that knowledge to a parallel language like R. Get the foundational basics done with R and then try diving into more complicated projects with the knowledge you just learned. Try and also utilize the strengths of the language or tool you're using. For example, R is known for its statistical strength with the numerous mathematical libraries it has, so I would find a project that can cater through those strengths. For those of you who are looking to get certified throughout the process, Google has two really good certifications talking about R and Python. I'll leave some links down below if you guys wanna check those out. Once you've done that, go ahead and repeat the process with the next tool, language, or service. Python, R, and SQL are the most used languages in the field, but if you wanna be more well-rounded, I recommend learning MATLAB and SAS because those are used too. Some industry, like the healthcare industry, might require you to use languages like SAS, so it will definitely come in handy if you have that in your skill set. You also wanna improve your data architectural and engineering skills too. I recommend you start by learning the fundamentals of databases and tables, some common practices on data modeling, and also learn how to use data build tools. Once you've got that down, I recommend you take it a step further and learn about cloud services such as AWS or Azure. I personally think AWS is more common, but either one will be fine. Obviously, the deeper you get, the more versatile and valuable you'll be. There are dozens, if not hundreds, of free resources and videos for you to use, so make sure to make use of them. If you want a more certified route, I'll leave a couple of free certifications that I took down below. If you have the time, I definitely recommend you go ahead and learn some advanced testing practices for deployment. Also learn the differences between various different database management systems to understand which one might be better for your business case. I would definitely do the same for BI tools. Pick a tool like Power BI, Tableau, or Looker and get some projects under your belt. I personally prefer Looker because of LookML, but whichever one you choose is going to be fine. Last but not least, you want to familiarize yourself with machine learning. I personally think this is the hardest step and it might take the most time, but it's definitely gonna be worth it. Go ahead and learn what machine learning is, the various different subsets like supervised and unsupervised machine learning. You're probably gonna be mainly using supervised machine learning algorithms at first, so go ahead and cater your focus to that. A lot of people tend to choose selective learning at this point, and I think that's a massive mistake. You don't want to just learn things like neural networks to put it on your resume. You'll want to understand it deeply so that you can know when to use it, and most importantly, when not to use it. Oftentimes, you'll find that the simpler solution is typically the better one. Again, if you want a more systematic learning route, I highly recommend the Andrew Ng Machine Learning Specialization on Coursera. It was by far one of the best courses I've ever taken and explains the various different concepts in machine learning in a very comprehensive manner. After you get some foundations and basics down, I recommend you take it a step further and dive into a specialization. Maybe you have something in mind like churn segmentation, causal inference, forecasting, large language models, or natural language processing. It might also be a good idea to do some research on the field to try and understand what's in demand right now. Just from skimming through a couple job boards and analyzing a few job descriptions, I've noticed that time series forecasting and large language models are in demand right now. This is probably because of the massive rise of AI within the past couple of years. Once you've reached this level, it might be a little harder for you to find some resources, but there definitely still are some good ones out there. Stanford has a bunch of free resources on YouTube, so does other websites like deeplearning.ai, so feel free to check those out. Great, now that you've covered all the learning, it's time for you to put those skills to the test and build your own end-to-end -end data science project. 
Remember, you don't need to master every specific skill. You just need to know enough to keep going. And if you do get stuck, don't worry. Just pick up where you left off and learn from there. These days with AI tools like ChatGPT, you essentially have a personal tutor by your side at all times. So I would definitely use that to my advantage. It is crucial to remember that this is not meant to be done overnight. It takes a lot of effort, learning, and curiosity to become a full stack data scientist. If you're currently already working in the field of data and have the capacity to take on more work, I highly recommend working with a mentor to take on more responsibilities and enhance your skill set. Again, the field of data is going through a massive change with the progression of AI, so the more prepared and valuable you are, the more job security you're going to get. I hope you guys found some value in this video. I will leave all the links and resources mentioned in the description down below. As always, if you guys have any thoughts or comments, feel free to leave them down below. I do my best to reply to every single one. Anyways, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.